In this box is a $20 mini PC that I bought from Facebook Marketplace. Today, we'll be testing how everyday use is, if we can stream some games, and we'll be seeing if we can be turning this into something useful. So I bought this mini PC for $20, and my idea for it is that I want to turn it into a smart TV box, kinda. My TV that I've had for probably about 7 years now, it's getting slow, that's what happens to a lot of smart TVs, because the software gets updated and the hardware does not. I feel like this would be a good way to bring my TV back to life. And I also want to be able to watch stuff without ads and all of that. And this would allow me to with Opera's built-in ad block. But for 20 bucks, I mean, you can't complain. We're going to be looking at everyday use as well as, you know, turn it into a uh, little streaming box, smart TV box, whatever you want to call it. I want to be able to play movies, like I said, as well as hopefully stream games onto my TV. My TV is only a 720p TV, so that does give it a bit more of a chance to perform because I would be streaming from 1080p down to 720p. The processor that's in here, which I will let you know, is not good whatsoever. Should do alright for that. Before we open up this box, let's look at the specifications. This processor is an Intel Atom X5 Z8350. It runs at 1.44 GHz has four cores and four threads, and pulls four watts. It was released in early 2016 and has a score of 891, which have to be one of the lowest scores that I've ever seen. And while we're here, we might as well see that it has four gigabytes of DDR3, 32 gigabytes of storage, and built-in Wi-Fi. Opening the box, we can see that it includes the mini PC, an HDMI cord, as well as a power cord. My first thoughts on the mini PC is that it's tiny. And without having a fan, I really hope that's going to do well with what I'm wanting it to do. Before we boot it up into Windows or anything, I do want to open this up and see what's inside. Which is when I noticed that the screws were underneath each of the little rubber pads for the feet. I'm personally not a big fan of this. I think that it ruins the case. I honestly don't mind exposed screws. Just having an exposed screw would be way better than having to rip off the feet and then wear down the adhesive over time. And now that the feet are off, we're able to unscrew each of these four screws. And with that, we can now expose the motherboard. We will need a couple more screws to get out, so let's do that real quick. And after about five minutes of trying to get this motherboard out without breaking anything, we were finally able to. On a first look, I wasn't really able to see anything, so I decided to probably take off this heatsink. With the heatsink off, you see that it's a little pad rather than thermal paste on this, which I think is pretty neat. There's also one on the GPU, you can see. But looking underneath, this is where we can find the CPU, GPU, as well as the RAM, unfortunately. This RAM is soldered onto the motherboard, meaning we cannot upgrade it, we cannot change it, nothing like that, which is really a bummer. Besides the CPU, the RAM not being upgradable is what's holding this PC back from being usable in a lot of cases for a lot of people. But now that we looked at everything that we can, let's put everything back together and see how it boots into Windows. My first time booting this up, I did notice the logo that was on the PC on the boot up, which is pretty nice. I do like to see that. And after that, it booted straight into Windows without me having to do anything. Having the name Little Guy is the perfect name for this mini PC. Comment Little Guy down below. It's good for the algorithm. And the first look at Windows 10 is probably a version that's almost five, six years old at this point. It's definitely going to need some updating. And while I was updating, or at least loading the updates, I could see that the storage was just an SD card and that was maxing out as well as the CPU was maxing out. So this is going to be a tough time. And I was not wrong. These loading screens puts every single Bethesda game to shame. I am not kidding. This took all day. But no matter what I would do, I would always end up on this screen. Undoing changes made to your computer. I don't know why it's doing this. I don't know what I could be doing wrong. Or if I am even doing anything wrong. All I know is that this computer is not wanting to update. Guess how long that took? Just for it to not update to the latest version of Windows, guess. It took five hours. It was horrible. Luckily, I was able to do something else because a lot of it was just updating and restarting over and over. So I was able to take my time with something more efficient. And now that we're past the stubborn updates and the computer's more cooled down and not getting maxed out doing literally anything, I'm going to download Opera GX just because I like the built-in ad blocker as well as being able to limit the CPU and RAM, which I think can really help this system. A lot of people will get upset about me using Opera GX because of certain issues with here or there, but I've never had an issue with them and I'm gonna keep using them, honestly. And now that Opera GX is downloaded, you can see the built-in CPU and RAM limiter, which I will be enabling and putting a hard limit on it, just to ensure that this computer isn't going to get overworked or overloaded just from the most basic uses. I limited the RAM to two gigabytes, along with limiting the CPU to 75%. Doing this will ensure 
that I won't get over that limit, which means that this computer should perform well because it's not maxing out 100% on the RAM or CPU in any case while I'm using this. It was at this point where I decided to push down the resolution to 720p. Hear me out, my TV is only a 720p TV and I'm not gonna be able to display at 1080p nor stream on it. So we're just gonna have to accept 720p as the best we can get. Plus, it technically means that our computer should have a better advantage at performing. I mean, without even doing anything, I can already tell a big difference in performance. But right before I did that, I make sure to turn off every single background application because I do not want anything running if I do not have it open. There is no reason for it to. But now that we're past that, we're gonna go onto YouTube, see how it works. As you can see, it's loading pretty chunky and it is really tanking a bit. And the first thing that you can see without me even turning on the stats is that it is lagging and dropping frames like crazy. This initially worried me, but I figured more than likely it should be okay. I probably had to drop the resolution. And the base resolution was 630 by 360 p I'm gonna go check out Firefox real quick. After trying far too long to try to find this certain YouTube add-on, I was finally able to, and I went onto YouTube with the initially looking really promising, but a still not being able to watch 720p YouTube, which is really unfortunate because I am able to on the YouTube, on the TV itself. Which does mean that this honestly is not that bad of an issue. But enough of this, let's go see how streaming a movie works out. And would you look at that, it actually runs pretty fine. I was not finding it slowing down or anything like that. I had no issues with streaming at all on Tubi. So now we've done some basic web browsing and know that this can watch movies and somewhat play YouTube videos. We're gonna move on and we're gonna see how it does with streaming games on Steam. Because we're gonna be downscaling this from 1080p down to 720p, we shouldn't really be encountering any performance issues because of that reason. And lucky for me, the last owner left a Steam install on the computer. Once we get Steam downloaded, it takes forever to load. And I mean, absolutely forever. I think it took at least 15 minutes just to load. Which to be fair, this can computer is not that good whatsoever so the fact that it even ran and booted up is something you can see right here just how slow it is and how much it's lagging just at the start of me opening up my library and opening up steam but with that done we're able to test our first game which is fallout 4 we're having this run at 720p because remember this is a 720p computer going on to a 720p tv so I won't need anything better, and when I stream it, more than likely it will automatically downscale to 720p because of my TV. I'm not doing any benchmarking for FPS or anything, I just wanted you guys to see the FPS in the corner, because I thought it was important for you guys to know how I'm seeing the game and how it's running. You can see that it stutters a little bit, but there's no big drops, we never went under 30 FPS. Overall, I would compare this a lot to the Xbox One and PS4 versions of Fallout 4, with it being kept at 720p, I'm not really noticing much of a difference from 1080p. Yeah, I mean, it was a very playable experience. The next game that we have up is Borderlands 2. This was running really good when there's a lot of enemies and you're trying to shoot them. There's a decent amount of lag, but besides that, I mean, this ran really well. Just like Fallout 4, we never dipped under 30 FPS. I mean, this was a very playable experience, especially considering the price and performance of this PC. On top of that, there was a couple stutters here and there, but it wasn't too big to the point where it's freezing my game or making it so I like lose or have trouble playing the game. Overall, like I said, it was pretty good. I'd have fun playing this if I was streaming on this on my TV. I don't see any issues. The last game that we're going to be testing is City Skylines. I just wanted to see how this would do because I know this game is more CPU intensive and it seemed to be doing perfectly fine. There wasn't any times where I was struggling to play the game or times where it was majorly dipping down. There was a couple times we did dip down under 30, but that was because we were doing something which is switching menus or doing something like that, which does bring our performance down, but our computer is able to handle it and bring it back up to 60. Overall, it could be better. It does lag a bit more than the last two games we saw, but it's still pretty playable. And I mean, you don't need the most FPS to have a city builder game. Overall, was this worth it? I mean, it seems like a pretty old computer and it doesn't really have much potential to do much. I mean, the only other things I could think with this is very old emulation, like I'm talking about NES, like way older stuff. I don't even know if we can handle the Nintendo 64 games. For what it's going to be used for, I think it's going to be all right. And I definitely want to do more within the future. I've been thinking about downloading Linux or even Windows 7 on this would perform significantly better than the Windows 10 that's on it right now. 
It is only 32-bit version, which did lead us to some issues, and for not having a fan, this thing got decently hot, and the more we go into the future, the more obsolete this is going to be. But I want to hear what you guys think. What do you think I should do with this computer? Should I download Linux? Should I try to do something with it? Maybe make a little Minecraft server onto it? But let me know in the comments down below. That's all I have for you guys this week. If you guys like this video, hit that like button down below, and subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next week.